Hi to everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be working on uh, this 1964 Honda Super Cub that I picked up uh, a couple days ago for $50, my $50 Honda 50. So I bought this Honda 50 from an individual who I actually bought two other Honda 50s from in the summer. And he, uh, he gave me a call and he said, uh, hey, I've got one more at the lake. It's been sitting underneath the tarp for at least 15 years. Um, but it ran before I put it away. So he uh, called me up and he said, it's a Honda 50, so give me 50 bucks for it and it's yours. Now, what he said was it was under a tarp at the lake. Uh, he used to ride it uh, in the trails, which is why it's got that big sprocket on the back. Uh, he says it doesn't go fast, but it'll climb uh, climb a wall. So it's kind of kind of like a trail 50. I love these little bikes. They're great. Um, I think they're the most reliable thing on two wheels, uh, which is why I'm kind of curious to see if it's going to work if I just dump gas in it. Now, I think that's just a, a pipe dream, but uh, when I'm done sh giving you guys a walk around, I'm going to... Uh, I'm just gonna dump gas in it. We're gonna see. We're gonna see if it runs. So I'll give you a little walk around here. So it's pretty dusty, pretty dirty. We got some cracks on the tires here. I mean, that's to be expected. It's been sitting underneath the tarp. It's all duct taped up. Somebody went ahead and uh, put a uh, sticker from a, a lawnmower or some engine on there. We don't need that. What else we got here? We've got a blue head on the uh, engine. Little Honda. I'll go there. Now this is a 64, so it'll have a three speed in it. So it's a semi-automatic. Um, this is his key. He said he just put that in there. On, off, on, off. Very cool. Easy, simple. Got the little Honda 50 logo there. Of course, we have our safety bolts on the shocks, which are safety rusted. And this is a huge sprocket. Now he said uh, a cousin of his was a machinist and he actually made the sprocket for him. Um, I know the Honda 50, the trails, they've got much smaller sprocket, but that'll be kind of cool. Seat's been redone. It's missing the turn signals. The muffler here, it's seen better days. It's a sport version. We got a little sticker on there again. Got some safety rust on the shocks. I haven't checked the oil. I haven't really checked anything other than the tires hold air. The throttle works. Uh, it says it's got Got 1,607 miles, so it's just broken in. It's just broken in here, and brake works. I mean, come on. This thing's ready to do 100 miles. It's cool. So that is the bike. So like I said, I, I'm, I'm really just curious to see if it'll just run. Um, so I'm gonna have a look at the state of the tank. We'll take a look at that and see if it's full of junk. And it's not too, too bad. We're just gonna dump gas in this one. We're gonna see if it works. We're just gonna go for broke. So I'll stop uh, jibber jabbering and let's rock and roll. Let's take a look at the tank here. Let's see. Let's see what we got going on here. Ooh. Well, there's certainly rust in it and some bad fuel. But I mean, I don't know. That doesn't look too bad, actually. It's, it doesn't smell great. Maybe I'll drain that out. I'll drain that out and we'll dump some in just to give it a better chance of starting here. But it's not too bad. Nothing a little uh, vinegar and some ball bearings won't take care of. So, so let's uh, drain it out and dump some gas in it. Right there. Oh, 
Well, that's ripped. So it really doesn't matter. I'll just snip that off. So there's that one. Oh, got some bad gas going here. Woo! Stinky. I'm sure that's... Ooh, that's a nice varnish. Very nice. You know, I'll run some... Uh, I'll run some good stuff through it. More as well. Don't want to drop that. Well, that got clear pretty quick. I mean, let's call a spade a spade here. Even though I'd like to think this is gonna start, it's been sitting for 15 years. It's got crap in the tank. I'm sure there's crap in the bowl. All right, I haven't even checked the oil. Um, I'm pretty sure it turns over. Um, so, uh, I, I'd, be, I'd be pretty surprised if it ran. I'll just say that, I mean, considering that's the yellow coming out of a nice little Gatorade for you. I'd be quite surprising. I mean, although it is a Honda, it's even still got the original little clips that came with it. These little washers here, or not washers, sorry, these little hold down clips, the wire. Oh, that's a pain. You know what? I'll leave that off because if I need to take the carp off, that'll just be easier. So, um, what I'm going to do is why don't I see if it turns over? Oh. Yep. Turns over. So that's a good start. Um, let's check the oil. Alrighty. Got my little shop towel. Some of that gun coat off. Let's have a look here. And just the tiniest little bit at the end there. So basically, it has almost no oil. Just a little dab at the end. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll fill that up. At least put a little bit more in than what's already in it. Well, I don't have any motorcycle oil, but I do have a nice 20W50 flavor here. I mean, if it runs, I'm not gonna, I won't keep the oil in there anyways. Um, this is pretty thick for the engine, but it hasn't run for a while. Maybe it'll help seal up some rings or whatnot, but. It won't stay in there forever. Let's see here. I'm gonna guesstimize how much I need. Hmm. That's one slurp. It's another slurp. We're gonna, oh, the spillage there. We're gonna call that enough. We're gonna say that's the exact right amount of oil Oop. for a 1964 Honda 50. Well, there's actually nothing at the end of the dipstick here. So it turns out, oh yeah, there is. Look at that, way more. It's covered in oil there. So that's good. I'll check one more time for safe measure. That's good. Good, good. Well, what's next? Let's just dump some gas in and see if it works. That's my style right there. Let's try that on for size. Let's do it. Is 
Drink, my friend. Drink. Alrighty. Let's uh let's see if it starts. Now I'm gonna give this thing a little little help in hand. A little quick start, but who knows? Maybe it fires. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that we need to turn the ignition on with our little magic key. I don't know what it's called. Let's leave that on. I have no clue. It might be on. It might be off. Who knows? Uh, we want this wide open. So that's on. So we're gonna get a little, little pump here for a primer. Just stick with the carburetor as it is. That's good. I go give it a little shot. <sighs> All right. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. It might just mean that my ignition isn't on. No, it doesn't sound like it wants to go. So let's check the spark. Let's see, uh, see where that's at. Well, I kind of would have liked it just to have start, but I guess it can't be that easy. Where's the fun in that? And my spark plug's not really on either, so could have something to do with it. My guess is the points would be quite corroded. Well, it's... wet. It smells like starting fluid. Let's see if it sparks. Where's my key? Let's see here. Oh! That sparks like crazy. See, it's got good spark. Well, maybe it just wasn't tight enough. The spark plug here. Bring it around there. So, I mean, I'll clean that up a little and we'll uh, put it back in. Looks a lot better. Oh yeah, that was not in tight enough. So it was definitely uh, blown past the spark plug. That's my guess anyway, so. Let's sit you back up here and let's give it a attempt number two. All righty, let's give this another shot here. We know it's getting spark. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. Ah, let's check it. Let's see. Well, there's a chance here that the rings might be stuck. Um, but I want to check the valve lash um, on the intake and the exhaust just to see if maybe it's too tight. And if so, it's letting air through the uh, intake or exhaust. So we're going to flip the bike around and, uh, and check the valve clearance.
So now we want to open the timing cover here and because they're uh, probably rusted pretty solid on, we're going to use a little bit of uh, gentle persuasion. Oh, that was easy. That was pretty easy too. All righty. Now I'm going to take that fully off. So, that gives us access to the timing marks there. And you know what? Just because I can, I might as well just pop it off. Won't hurt nothing. So, we'll loosen up. Not here, oh, that's tight. Okay, there's a special tool you're supposed to put on this adjusting screw here. But of course, I don't have one. A 3D printed one, but it's at home. So what we're gonna do, uh, well, we're gonna do what any professional does. And I guess we're going to knock the camera around a bunch. But we'll uh, see so if we can make this work. Oh, still can't fit it. fit anything in there so it's still too tight. Let's try the needle nose here. There it is. All right. So now that that's in there, we just want a little bit of resistance. Not a ton, just a little bit. Just so it drags. That's good right there. That's good. Uh, the bottom. I will check. And I will do that myself here, just because I can't get the camera down there. But I'll check the bottom real quick, and uh, we'll come back here. All right, we'll get you down here. Just have a look. So it was too tight before. But now it is perfect. It just has enough tension that it drags just a little bit. you got to make sure you put oil on your um, feeler gauges. Otherwise, you can scrape the uh, valve stem and it uh, mars it. It's not good for it. So, so I'm going to put the caps back on here and uh, and we'll, uh, well, we'll see if it fires. Good. I'll leave the valve cover, um, or sorry, the timing cover off just in case I need to get back in there, but uh, otherwise I'll uh, spark plug cap back on and uh, let's turn it over, let's see if it runs. All right, here we go. I guess this would be, this would be attempt number three. Get some of the good stuff. No, let's see. Let's see what happens. That's on, that's on.
Well, it's got way better compression than it did before. Um, now you put your finger over it. So your finger, you can hold back about 100 PSI worth of pressure with your finger. So if I put my finger over the spark plug hole and turn it over, if air blows past my finger, then it's over 100 PSI. And these tiny little engines, I mean, they're, they're so reliable, they'll run on like 70 PSI. So there's more than enough compression there, even more so now that it's time or uh, gap properly. Um, my next step here is uh, do the carburetor. So again, I just wanted to see if it was just gonna fire off for me. Um, I was just more curious than anything if I was to do this actually properly. I would have started with the carburetor, taken that all apart and cleaned it up. But hey, here we are. Tried something new, didn't work out. And now we're just gonna take the carburetor off. So, so much fun. You know, we tried something new. We had a few laughs along the way. But in the end, you always gotta take the carburetor off. So I really just wanna take uh, it off enough that uh, I can move the carburetor over and t just tilt it over so I can get to the uh, float ball here. Um, I have no doubt all the gas will pour out that I have poured into it. So foolishly now, as it turns out, but that's okay. I didn't put a ton in, so I'll just catch it. Okay, I'm just gonna get something to catch the gasoline here. All right, well the carburetor's off. It's kind of giving me an idea. There's the intake right there. And I'm wondering, just to see if the rings are bad or uh, if there's something else going on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some uh, quick start in there, just to see. Maybe it'll fire. If it fires, uh, I know it's worth uh, Continuing, if not, there might be ser something seriously wrong with the engine here. So like the rings are all stuck. But uh, what the heck, it's worth a shot, right? So let's go for broke. Why not? Let's try that again. All right, let's do that again. Let's see if we, what we can find out of the tailpipe. pipe. Maybe it'll be black soot or something interesting flying out of there. Let's see. Let's get the fuel flowing properly here. Nice. Well, talk about renewed confidence. Because uh, that was pretty darn sweet. So I'm going to take the float bowl off. Try not to shade the, the carburetor too much. Just zoom in here a little. Um, I'm hoping, and I'll shut this off, that we don't have too much gas floating in here. That's 
pretty sweet. Always nice to know that your efforts aren't in vain. I'm gonna be. What do we got here? So if we turn this on, okay, we get some good flow. That's good. All over the hot exhaust. Always nice. Oh yeah, there's some junk in there. Some nice junk in there. So let's clean that up. Let's spray that down with some carb cleaner and wash it out here. All that junk in the bottom there. That would definitely limit fuel flow. So we'll clean all that up. Have a look at the float here. Float doesn't look that bad, it's just kind of gummy. So that'll be fine. We'll give this a spray down, put it back on and uh, see what happens here. Pull up. See if we can uh, unclog whatever's clogged here. Get a little air. I got the big air here. All right. So unfortunately, my camera uh, clicked off. It died on me, but uh, the only thing you missed was me just cleaning this out. So I only have some quick spray here and my uh, my carb cleaning kit here. These little uh, needles are great. It's a little cleaning tool. And they get into all the little small passageways and stuff. I love this. Money well spent. Um, but this is all cleaned, all ready to go back on. So I'll throw it back on and... Uh, We'll go from there. There we go. Goes this way. That's not tight. In case the meter needle stuck, give it a tap. Alrighty. I think that's good. Let's uh let's see if it starts.
smokage, just a tad. But it runs and it idles. Woo! Ah, it'll break itself in. Let's take this thing for a ride. I want to see what this uh, big sprocket does. Open the garage door before I uh, suffocate myself here. Not too bad for a $50 investment. Uh, it just snowed here. I would have liked to have taken it a bit farther, but I think it uh, needs a bit more tuning before it can go uh, straight into the uh, drifts there. But uh, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, so if you want to see more of this, uh, follow the channel. And, uh, and I think we can make this into a pretty cool off-roader. So it wasn't very quick, but it uh, felt like a good climb up a wall with that uh, rear sprocket. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll uh, catch you next time.